Sharpen your pill crows, people. Today we're talking about paragraphs. But not like that. Hi friends, welcome back. Unfortunately, there's no better way to start than just ripping off the bandage right away. Paragraphs are totally made up. That is, there is no official, formal definition of a paragraph, and we've seen something similar like this happen before with sentences. While there is a reliable definition for a clause, sentences are just too varied to have a single universal definition. Really, a sentence is just whatever happens between a capital letter and a period. And the definition of a paragraph is a variation on the same theme. Whatever happens between one indented line and the next is a paragraph. Anything beyond that is just too hard to pin down. And yeah, that means that the rule that a paragraph is three to four sentences long is a totally made up rule. So you're welcome, or I'm sorry, depending on who you are. But anyway, even though paragraphs don't have rules, readers still have expectations as they read your paragraphs. So it may not be able to write a paragraph that is technically wrong, but it's still possible to write a paragraph that isn't very good. Our goal today then is to give you three guidelines that will set you up with a deeper understanding of how paragraphs work so that you can then write stronger paragraphs in this bold, rule-free paragraphing world. And of course, the whole purpose of this show is to set you up with the kind of understanding that you need to be a better writer in any situation. So if that sounds like your cup of hot chocolate, why not subscribe as we get into it? The first thing to keep in mind while writing your paragraphs is to keep them focused on one main idea. The only thing we really know about any particular paragraph is that it starts with an indented line or some other kind of white space and ends with a line break. Anything that happens in between those two points is totally up to you, but those white space boundaries do turn paragraphs into little contained units of language. That means that there should be some kind of integrity to the paragraphs you write, or there should be some reason why everything in a paragraph is there. So you could think of your whole paper as a kitchen, and then you could imagine that each paragraph is like a drawer. There are no rules about what can or can't go in a drawer, so you could just toss all your kitchen tools into whatever drawer you feel like, and no one would arrest you for that. But now imagine that somebody else was going to cook something in your kitchen they would have a miserable time finding what they needed to get the job done. Where are the measuring spoons? What about the chef's knife? Where do you keep the whisks? Obviously, a stranger would have a much easier time cooking in your kitchen if all the supplies were organized into labeled drawers, one for knives, one for measuring utensils, another for spoons and spatulas, etc. So instead of just throwing anything anywhere, an organized kitchen will have reasons for the things that go in each drawer. And of course, when there are reasons for things to be together in drawers, it becomes a lot easier for someone to navigate the kitchen as they cook. And a very similar thing is at work with a paragraph. Readers are kind of like strangers who are working in your kitchen. They don't know why you have put things in particular paragraphs, so they're going to have a much easier time understanding your point when each paragraph has a clear label of what's inside and when the contents of those paragraphs match the label. So paragraphs should be focused on one main idea, and they should tell the reader what they're about pretty early on. And keeping this principle in mind will help you to avoid writing what I call junk drawer paragraphs. Almost every kitchen has a junk drawer, forgotten somewhere in a back corner and full of mismatched odds and ends like loose keys, sticks of gum, screws, and who knows what else. And junk drawer paragraphs are very similar. They talk about multiple things at once in no particular order, and at the end, they may have a sentence that kind of sort of pulls everything together, but not always. Now you as a writer might know why you're lumping a bunch of sentences together into one paragraph, but your readers may have trouble grasping that logic without a little bit of help. And that's why a focused topic sentence or a sentence that tells your readers what the paragraph is about can be so helpful. First of all, it helps readers to know how they should interpret the information they're about to receive. And secondly, it helps to keep you honest. Anything that doesn't fit the label for that paragraph shouldn't be there. So keep your paragraphs focused. Everything that goes into a drawer should have a reason for being in that drawer, and it should be clear to your readers why the sentences and ideas in a paragraph are there. Our first tip had to do with what your paragraphs are about or what your paragraphs are. This second one has to do with what your paragraphs are doing in order to support the overall goals of the paper. That is, each paragraph should have a clear purpose. And this can be a tricky difference to get right. For example, a spoon is a stick with a little cup at the end, but a spoon does scooping and stirring. And you could have two papers that are both about the ocean, but they could be doing very different things. For example, 
One could just be informing people about life at the bottom of the ocean, while the other could be persuading the government to reallocate funds from space exploration to the construction of an undersea research base. Now, these two papers would have very different purposes, and accordingly, each of the paragraphs in those two papers would have to do very different jobs. So let's take a closer look at that argument about a deep sea research base. For a paper like that, the overall goal is to persuade the audience to fund a project to build an undersea base. That's what the paper is meant to do. Now, what are the individual paragraphs doing? If you're going to persuade someone to build something at the bottom of the ocean, you probably need to help them understand why it's needed in the first place. So you could have a paragraph that explains the problem your proposal is trying to solve. Maybe it's a complex problem with multiple aspects. Great! Now you have multiple paragraphs that are all working together to establish different aspects of the problem. Then you'll need paragraphs that show how your proposal is actually a solution to the problem. They could be whatever they're about, but they also need to do the task of validating your proposal. And you may want to conclude with a paragraph or more that explains the implementation of your plan. You may have shown your reader that there's a problem and convinced them that you have a solution. Now you need to show them how to make it all actually happen. And step by step, you may have a series of paragraphs dealing with the practical application of your plan. So you see, strong paragraphs are not just about one idea, but they also do one job. A purposeful paragraph can propose, explain, refute, illustrate, describe, or anything else. It doesn't really matter what your paragraphs are doing, but they need to be doing something, and they should probably only be doing one something. For example, sometimes I'll see students add paragraphs to persuasive essays that don't do much more than share interesting information that they gathered from their research, and this poses a problem when it comes to writing paragraphs with purpose. That's because the only real purpose of a paragraph like that is to share neat stuff, not to support the development of an argument. So that paragraph, because it doesn't serve a purpose for the overall essay, doesn't really belong in that essay. Either that information needs to be given a clear purpose, or perhaps better yet, just delete it outright. Okay, we've got paragraphs that are focused on one idea and that do one job. Now we just need to make sure that our paragraphs don't get too long. So for those of you watching at home, here's a game that you can play along with our studio audience. Our producers will be flashing a set of digits on the screen in three rounds. For each round, your task is to memorize the set of digits and repeat them back when asked. Are you ready? Okay, here comes round one. What were the digits? If you said 9-1, you were correct. And round two. What were they this time? If you answered 2-0-2-0-2-0, congratulations. And finally, here's round three. Now, can anyone remember that last string of digits? Hold on, I'm just getting word from the producers that even they can't remember the string of numbers. So the grand prize for tonight's show is being suspended until next week. Okay, so how did you do? My guess is that you did pretty well on the first two rounds, but that the third round gave you a little bit of trouble. And that's because human brains can only hold on to so much information at once. People tend to do better when information is broken up into smaller pieces that they can process and then store in slightly longer term memory baskets. And that's why paragraphs can be so useful. They give readers opportunities to pause, process the information they've just received, and then reset and prepare for the next bit of information. But this is also why long paragraphs can be so counterproductive. The longer the paragraph, the more you risk overtaxing your reader's working memory and losing them in the overwhelming rush of information. But luckily, our first two guidelines can go a long way towards helping you to keep your paragraphs brief. Most of the long paragraphs that I see in student writing have obvious points where they shift in either their content or their purpose, and that presents clear places where they could be split into smaller, more manageable paragraphs. Frankly, I think one of the main reasons that I see such overwhelming Frankenstein monster paragraphs is that people have the idea that an essay should only be five paragraphs long. So they try smashing two or three smaller paragraphs into one bigger one in order to maintain that magical number of five. But Guess what? Believe it or not, the five paragraph rule is another totally made up rule. Essays can have however many paragraphs they want. But of course, what counts as brief will vary from situation to situation. The paragraphs that I write in big academic papers tend to be longer than the ones that I write in emails. Sometimes a paragraph will have one complex idea and one purpose, and it will need to take up more space, and that's okay. But you should just be mindful of your readers and their appetites for large chunks of information. The point is that you're generally better with more short paragraphs than with fewer long paragraphs, 
because it will give your readers more opportunities to take breaks and make sense of what you're saying. Obviously, things that belong in the same drawer should stay in the same drawer, but if you can find ways to subdivide drawers, it's not going to do any harm. So when we say make your paragraphs brief, what we mean is don't forget that your readers are people too. Be mindful of the limitations of their working memory and don't force them to hold on to vast quantities of information at one time. Well, this has been fun, hasn't it? But because fun, like paragraphs, is better in small doses, I suppose it's time we draw today's party to a close. Hopefully you find these guidelines helpful as you go and write your own paragraphs. Of course, these are guidelines, not rules. After all, paragraphs are totally made up, and I'm sure you'd be able to find really great paragraphs that go against the things that we've said today. But I'm also sure that those paragraphs would be the exceptions rather than the norms. For most everyday writing needs, these three tips will work just fine. So anyway, let me know what you think. I always enjoy talking about the more technical aspects of writing, so if there's something that you'd like to know more about, don't hesitate to share it in the comments. Also, if you did find this video helpful, I hope you'll give it a like and share it with a friend or five, especially the ones who think that paragraphs have to do with Cartesian duplication. But that'll do it for today. Thanks a bunch for watching. Now, go write some positively powerful paragraphs.